Can Chelsea afford to win the Carabao Cup? That is the question we're going to be speaking about in today's news show. Let's talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing really well. Chelsea getting closer. We all are getting closer to Sunday at Wembley Carabao Cup final. And that's going to be the, the bulk of today's show, the one story in today's news show. And I'll give you my thoughts because I have seen a lot of reaction to this. And I think one of the things I'm going to set out very early is I don't think it's healthy to just dismiss reports like this because they're a bit inconvenient, because they don't make us feel that good about the club, that especially for me as someone who makes a show about Chelsea, to just ignore it and to just claim it's it's smearing from the media. Because if you know who Liam Toomey is, that's insanity. Because this is a guy who's been reporting on Chelsea, not only at The Athletic, but for ESPN before that. This is a well-sourced respected someone I've had on this show to speak about Chelsea so it's information I think is relevant it's stuff we have to take seriously doesn't mean all of it is going to come to fruition and I'll give you my answer whether I think that it actually is a negative for Chelsea to win the Carabao Cup maybe you'll guess what my answer is from the off and of course as ever I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below because we will dive into the details and I think the devil is in the details with this rather than just dismissing that headline out of hand so let's get into it. So Liam Toomey reports that the most important thing is that a win on Sunday would obviously bring European football back to Stamford Bridge in the form of participation in the Europa Conference League playoff round. But it is not clear whether Chelsea are in a position financially to enjoy that reward. Currently, the club are only required to comply with the Premier League's Profit and Sustainability Rules, PSR, which allows losses of up to £105 million over a three-year period. They did so albeit narrowly, for the monitoring period ending June the 30th of last year and insist they intend to remain on the right side of the rules for 23-24. Many outside Chelsea, including the respected football finance analyst Swiss Ramble, are convinced significant player sales will be required before June 30th to meet the objective. Returning to UEFA for competition next season will only increase the size of that challenge because it subjects the club's accounts to significant new pressures. And this is important because I know a lot of people's retort instantly to this piece was, well, we're absolutely fine for the PSR when it comes to the Premier League. You know, Everton, Nottingham Forest got charged. Chelsea didn't, despite some rumours they may have done. After that weekend of kind of speculation, we didn't. We're fine. And there's a hope that we will be fine again this summer. But Europe and UEFA, as we're about to find out, are a lot stricter changes and basically moves the goalposts which makes it more difficult for Chelsea if they are to re-enter Europe next season. Liam Toomey reports that all participants in the Champions League, Europa League or Europa Conference League must comply with the UEFA's club licensing and financial sustainability regulations, this is called FSR, the rules that replace financial fair play in the summer of 2022. He explains that Chelsea players also are likely to have bonuses written into their contracts that are tied to European qualification which will increase the club's overall salary cost. The cost for Chelsea over this season when you look at what PSR judges you by compared to what the FSR in the UEFA judges you by there's a massive discrepancy in total I think it's about 59 million for Chelsea when it comes to the Premier League but over 80 million with UEFA that's a substantial difference it adds up over a period of time which means that there is a concern here for Chelsea getting into Europe Qualifying for the Europa League and returning to UEFA's financial jurisdiction would lower the maximum amount Chelsea could lose by 36.5 million while increasing the amortised cost of their transfer spending in the summer of 2023 by 21.5 million. I'll leave a link in the description box below because there is more detail I didn't get into in this piece. Uh, so please go and check that out. I am you know, of the belief that the club got themselves into this situation. I think that's something I continue to say. I may sound like a broker record for people who watch my show very regularly, but I think it's worth saying it because I think it's easy for fans to fall into kind of a, a sense to defend the club that everything has kind of been forced on Chelsea and they kind of have to do things this way. There's no kind of alternative solution. When actually, when you reframe it and think, well, the club have kind of put themselves in this situation and sure, maybe there's only a realistic solution to get out of it. But that doesn't mean we sit here and go, oh, it's all perfectly fine or it's you can't criticise it. You can't criticise the logic behind it. You can't call it stupid. Fans can't be irritated. 
And I think that CFC Daily, who I sort of had a discussion with on X earlier today about this, and he he made some points, um, kind of more of my belief around this than others. He tweeted, embarrassing what has happened to the club financially. It's reckless, risky, and has now brought out a debate whether Chelsea would be better off forfeiting because the club can't afford to get hit by UEFA sanctions. We need conference just so we can get a free Europa League ticket. And that is, of course, with the, the confidence and belief that Chelsea would win the Conference League if they were in it next season. But I, I do think this is absolutely relevant because I know a lot of the kind of the the flippant and kind of instant responses, well, the club surely know what they're doing. Listen, I think that that's a nice belief. I would like to as well give the benefit of the doubt and believe that the club knew what they were doing and at least have understood the limits they could go over. This is something the Swiss Ramble, I know, extensively talked about almost a year ago. Kevin, um, Kieran Maguire has, sorry. Other financial experts have spoken about as well and, and maybe speculated that, you know, have Chelsea taken this gamble with the expectation that, yeah, maybe sure that they'll have to pay a fine. There may even be at most a transfer ban, which we saw a couple of years ago. That's why they front loaded the spending and was spoken about a lot last year. But it is still reckless and it could have a really substantial impact on Chelsea to the season. You know, if Chelsea qualified for Europe, which I think was the main objective for Mauricio Pochettino for all of us was to see Chelsea back in Europe. And then we can't play European football next season. We can't benefit from European football next season because of the club's reckless spending. That's a massive step backwards. And it's not something that you can just brush under the carpet. And sure, other clubs have fallen victim to this. Other clubs have been found guilty or other clubs are being monitored in a similar way to Chelsea. But that doesn't mean that Chelsea didn't do anything wrong. That doesn't mean as fans, we throw up our hands and blame other people. And it also doesn't mean in a current point of view, we just deny reality. We deny the numbers right in front of our faces because the numbers right in front of our faces show that Chelsea have spent a lot of money. They've put themselves in arguably a reckless situation and may have to pay the price in some form or fashion by the Premier League and potentially UEFA in the coming years. And that will have an adverse effect maybe on ticket prices. It could have an adverse effect on the type of quality of player we see in the first team. These are all things that have to be considered. I don't think that dismissing them is a very honest way of going about it. Now, we get to the fundamental question here when it comes to Sunday, which is right around the corner, the, the thing right in front of us. You know, can Chelsea afford to win the Carabao Cup? I'm very firm about this, and this comes from, yeah, a supporter. I also think what, what you'd ask any player, any coach, we need to win the Carabao Cup. Winning the Carabao Cup will be, in terms of what that trophy could mean for Chelsea, significance, and I think there is almost an historical parallel to 2005. Not quite the same because, of course, Chelsea aren't competing for a Premier League title. That was one of many titles that came in a short period of time. But I think for everything we've experienced as fans over the past 18 months, I don't. I, there's no embarrassment for me. And I know some people may you know, shrug their shoulders and go, it's only the League Cup, look how far we've fallen. But there would be a massive weight to this League Cup compared to any other uh, for Chelsea Football Club. I don't think anyone can honestly deny that of what that boost could mean for this group of players especially a young group of players for Mauricio Pochettino winning his first trophy in England the only other major English final he made in his career whilst being here was in his first season at Spurs and he lost to Chelsea in the League Cup final so there's a, again there's some narrative kind of parallels there heading into Sunday and I would like to think that the effect of winning is contagious, just like the effect of not winning can be contagious in, in a really bad way. And I'd like to think that the experience that these players could gain by winning would gain Chelsea a level of confidence and unity that could propel us forward and finish higher in the Premier League. Now, that doesn't completely discount what we're seeing here. It really doesn't. And Chelsea could win on Sunday. We'll have all the celebrations, we'll be happy, we'll be ecstatic, I'll be there at Wembley. It will feel like a massive weight has been lifted because not only of, of the, the stress of the past 18 months, but also the fact that we haven't won a domestic cup for so long, lost many cup finals in recent years. But then there is that financial reality coming down uh, the track and I think that then it becomes of, of, of how Chelsea are going to deal with that situation. And I think unfortunately a lot of us have probably come to the realisation that a lot of those um, a lot of those sales are going to have to come through the academy players. Again, I hate saying have to, but it's the easiest route. And we've seen the club do this before in recent years. I think my biggest fear is that you do part ways with someone like Conor Gallagher. 
My hope is, as they did last year, and actually think this is something that you can bring up in defense of the ownership, because there was a lot of scaremongering about the 30th of June last year. Again, this was about Premier League, not Champions League or UEFA rules. Chelsea were able to make a lot of sales before June the 30th, and that really helped them out. I mean, you think about the money we got for Kai Havertz, the money we got for Mason Mount, Mateo Kovacic. It, it made a big difference in the end, especially from a wage perspective. And if Chelsea could do something similar this year where they were able to get, say, Raheem Sterling off the books, they were able to sell Marco Correa. Maybe you're looking at selling one of the goalkeepers, um, but then you'd obviously have to go out and sign someone else. Though uh, Thiago Silva is likely to be moving on, he's not on a small wage. These are all things that could add up, but I do think there's going to be some academy players making moves. And I think Ian Matson is one of those, very likely. Lewis Hall is another one. Um, and... Armando Breuer, I think, should be the last one. I can just see that deal happening. There may be others as well who haven't really made a a move into the first team. I think it will be frustrating. And I know as other people point out, it will be unpopular. But just because it's unpopular doesn't mean it's the right decision. And it doesn't mean that the club is then scot-free and doesn't garner some criticism. Because as I've consistently said as well, no one forced us to spend a billion pounds. No one forced us to spend this you know, recklessly, this this way that, you know, ha- has led us into a situation where Chelsea can win a trophy that should get us back into Europe. And then there's even the reality that Chelsea might not be in Europe because of our financial situation, because we've spent too much. That is That shows a club that has been not only reckless, but silly. And, you know, done things that really represent a club with not much clarity, not much direction, not being shrewd in the transfer market, and it's cost us, right? And especially if fans are seeing their ticket prices potentially going up in the summer, and they're also seeing a team that hasn't competed for the Premier League title again, has been mostly mid-table. We have to see how this season ends, of course, but they'll be asking serious questions as well. So I wanted to make this video today under no illusion. I want to win on Sunday and there'll be no part of me that will be like at the end if Chelsea somehow have beaten Liverpool by a miracle. I'm I'm stood there at Wembley and, and sudden I, I look up at the blue watch, but I think if God, if only, you know, we could have lost this game and the finances, you know, wouldn't have been as tricky and awkward. It affects me, but then also I want Chelsea to win. And I think you can, as we spoke about earlier this week, and as I sort of speak about so regularly on this show, Two things can be true at once. You can be very critical of the club. You can be concerned about the direction of the club. But then, of course, you always want to be loyal. You always want to defend the club. I understand some people's willingness to defend Chelsea because of, you know, media attacks we've seen in recent years, some of them being quite unfair, maybe coming from a place of bad faith. This is not one of those situations. And I think it's important that people take account of this information because I I think that, you know, later down the line, if something comes to fruition that we don't like, then you aren't as shocked. So that's my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this show. If you're a Chelsea fan and you want more carefree content, please do hit that subscribe button. Really helps the channel out as well as the like button and sharing it around with friends so more people can get involved in the community. And you can follow Son of Chelsea across socials at Son of Chelsea on TikTok, on Instagram and on X. Thank you.